Hello AP Physics students. In today's lesson, we're going to make use of Kirchhoff's voltage and current rule, specifically applying them to circuits that are a bit more complex to look at. And we'll do that by examining a couple of example problems. One example problem is one that I took from uh, a university textbook uh, when I did a second year electrical circuits course. And the second example we'll look at uh, an AP exam question in terms of uh, how we can do some more complex circuit analysis. All right, so the first one, I have a circuit and it has a lot of resistors in it. And what I wanna do is based on the number of resistors in this circuit, I wanna take all those resistors and I wanna break the circuit down so that I only have a single resistor. And if I break it down to have a single resistor, we're going to refer to that as being the equivalent resistance for the specific circuit and specifically between points A and B in the circuit. Who knows what point A and B are connected to? They could be connected to a battery, but that's not really uh, the, the important part of this problem. It's mainly just a matter of like how we can break the circuit down. Now, the first thing I want to do is just because there are so many resistors and I want to keep track of what's going on is I'm going to label all of them. So I will label this resistor on the top uh, left. We'll call that R1. We'll call this one, that's 4.00 ohms, R2. We'll call this one up in the middle, R3. I'll call this three ohm resistor down here, R4. I'll call this one at the top, R5. We'll call this one in the middle, R6. And then we'll call this one at the bottom, R7. Okay. Now, the key thing about combining resistors is you have to identify whether the resistors are in series or they're in parallel. So just to make like one point clear, because like right here may not, not be clear whether they are in series or parallel, but if you do have resistors that are in series, they have to all be on the same branch. you know they're on the same branch. And this is the thing you wanna look for is there cannot be a junction point between resistors or a node. Uh, if I go back to the diagram, like this is a junction point. It's kind of like where the, wi the, the wire starts to split into like different paths. So uh, if they are in series, there are uh, no junctions or nodes. So it might look like R3 and R5 are in series, but they definitely are not. Because if you had current that was moving uh, from this point on the left here to this point on the right, when it hits this branch, the current is gonna split into a couple different paths. So the only way I can truly know if resistors are in series is that if they're on the same branch and there are no nodes between them. So looking at the diagram here, the only ones I can definitively say are along the same branch because there's no junction points between them is go, uh, going from R5 to R7. If you started at R5, you then go through R6 and then R7 and going through R5, R6, R7, that's a single branch, okay? There's no nodes and there's no junctions in between those different resistors. So that's the first thing we're gonna combine. So I'll say step one here. I'm going to combine I'll say R5, R6, R7 in series.
Now, if you have resistors in series and you want to combine them, all you have to do is just add the different resistance values together. So I'll say the combined resistance for resistors, we'll say five through seven. Okay, so five dash seven would be equal to R5 plus R6 plus R7. And then this would be equal to R5 is 1.00 ohms plus R6, which is 2.00 ohms. And then plus R7, which is 3.00 ohms. Okay, so R5 through 7 would have an uh, equivalent resistance of 6.00 ohms. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw the circuit. Anytime I do like one of these combinations of the resistors, it's just going to make it easier to identify whether things are in parallel or series if, uh, if I can redraw it. So just redrawing it as quickly as I can. Uh, so we have point A at the top left here. Okay, point A then goes to resistor R1. And then we drop down and we have resistor R2. Okay, and then we have point B here. <clears throat> okay, then we go across and we have R3. Then we drop down and we have R4. And then we go across and we have that combined resistance. which is R5 through 7. Okay, now we have to try to identify what's the next thing we can possibly combine. So nothing's really in series here because if you compare R1 to R2, R3 to R4, R4 to R5 through 7, there's a node between every single branch. So there's no way we can combine any of these resistors in series, which means we're going to have to combine some of the resistors in parallel. So the key thing about resistors in parallel is that they must have the same voltage across them. The way I like to think about this one is we kind of like to use Kirchhoff's voltage rule and I'm going to compare a couple different loops and I'll know that two resistors are in parallel if I go through a couple different loops and the only thing that distinguishes the loops are the two resistors that I'm considering to be in parallel. So I'll write this down and I'll kind of like illustrate what I mean by this point. So compare two loops. or multiple loops, I'll say. And the only difference in the loops is a single resistor. All right, so let me show you a couple different loops here. So let's say we start at point A and I'm gonna follow a loop that goes from point A and then once it hits uh, this node right here, it's gonna turn down and it's gonna go through R4. Okay, so that's one loop and going from like point A to point B. Now I'm going to draw another loop. Okay, so this time I'm going to have the uh, start from point A. Instead of turning down at this junction, I'm actually going to keep going. Okay, I'm going to go down here and then I'm going to come back to this point like that. Now, if you were to compare the green loop compared to the purple loop, uh, both of those loops pass through R1 and R3, 
The only difference between the two loops is when they go, uh, they go downward, they pass through a different branch. So uh, the green loop passes through R4 and the uh, purple loop here passes through the combined resistance of R5 through 7. So those are in parallel because whatever the voltage drop is across uh, resistor 1 and resistor 3, okay, both those loops are going to experience that exact same voltage drop which means that whatever the voltage drop is across resistor four, that has to be equivalent to the voltage drop across resistors five through seven. And that's why no resistors are in parallel. So to calculate the combined resistance, and we'll clarify it. So let's say here, we're going to say step two is uh, we're going to combine. R4 and R5 through seven in parallel. And this has that reciprocal relationship. So if I want the equivalent resistance for R4 and R5 through seven in parallel, it'd be one over R, we'll say four through seven, because now we're gonna combine resistors four through seven, and that would be equal to one over R4 plus one over R5 through seven. Okay, let's plug some numbers in. It's, it's better just to plug the numbers in, calculate what one over R4 through seven is, and then just invert it at, at the last step. So this would be equal to one over R4 is 3.00 ohms. Plus one divided by R5 through seven is 6.00 ohms. We can write this in the common denominator just so we can actually add these together. So I just wanna have a, a common denominator of six. We can just write this one so it's two over six. So then if you add them together, you then have this is equal to uh, three, we don't need to write down these decimal places. We can worry about the significant digits at the end. Okay, so this would be three over six ohms, which is one over two ohms. And if you compare the original equation, it's one over R4 through seven is one over two ohms. So if you just, you just find the reciprocal of uh, one over two ohms, you would just get that the combined resistance R4 through seven would be equal to two ohms. Okay, let's redraw the circuit out again. And let's, uh, point A. Okay, got resistor one, and then drop down, got resistor two. Okay, we got resistor three here. And then we have R4 through seven. Okay, so the next step is you can see that R3 and R4 through 7 are along the same branch. If you go from R3 to R4 through 7, there is no junction or node that's in between them. And because of that, they're in series. And by the way, I, I should have mentioned this up here. Uh, in terms of what it means for resistors to be in series, it means that the current through them is the same. Current. Same along branch. That's why it's a problem if there's a node, because if there's a node in between, then the node makes the current start to split up. All right, so we're going to combine, uh, uh, yeah, R3 and R4 through seven in series. So I'll do that in the next uh, slide here. So step three, combine R3 and R four through seven in series. So if we do that, we then have R three through seven would be equal to, so it'd be, again, we combine in resistors in series, we just add the resistance values together. So R three plus R four through seven 
which would be equal to <clears throat> R3 is 6 ohms plus R4 through 7 had a combined resistance of 2 ohms. So we're going to have R3 through 7 is going to be equal to 8 ohms. And once again, let's redraw the circuit out and see what we have left now. So again, yeah, we've got this uh, point A. Okay, connected to R1. Okay, this drops down again. And you have R2. Okay, it goes over to point B. And then we have this effective resistance, which is the R3 through 7. Okay, so once again, we're trying to identify, like, can we combine in series or parallel? These guys are definitely not in series because they're along two separate branches. Now, again, the way to identify, like, whether they are in parallel or not is I would just, again, can consider two different loops and then ask yourself, is the only difference between those two different loops just a single resistor? So if we go back here, if you start at point A and you do a loop where you start at A and you drop down through resistor number two, and then if you do another loop where you start up here, drop down, and then go back to point B, the only thing that is different between the two is R2 and R3 through 7. So both of these uh, uh, these paths would result in the same voltage drop across resistor 1, which means that the only difference between the two of them would be the voltage across, across these two resistors. And they have to be the same because by the time you like complete a closed loop, you need uh, your net voltage to be equal to zero according to Kirchhoff's voltage law. Not that we're worrying about that right here because we haven't shown what A and B is connected to, but this is the logic in terms of like how they're actually in parallel. So let's do that, combine them. So we have step four, we combine uh, R2 and R3 through seven in parallel. So we go to that reciprocal relationship. So that tells me that one over resistors two through seven combined would be equal to one over R2 plus one over R3 through seven. So this would be one over R2, which is four ohms plus R3 through seven was uh, uh, one over eight ohms. And again, just to add these together, we just want to have a common denominator. So I can just turn a, a quarter into two eighths. And then this would give me uh, three over eight ohms. And then just to uh, figure out what the R2 through seven is, just find the reciprocal of this fraction. So you'd have R2 through seven would then be equal to eight over three ohms and let's convert that to a decimal number so we can say it's equal to 2.67 ohms okay if we draw this redraw the circuit out we're pretty much done now okay so we have a and then we just have a uh, resistor one and then we're down to having resistors two through seven and then back to point b and then you can see there's only one branch left. So these two are in series. So we would just combine. R1 and R2 through 7. In series. So we would have, I'm going to call it R equivalent now because it is the total resistance or the circuits, we'd have R equivalent is equal to R1 plus R2 through 7, which would be equal to R1 is 2 ohms, plus R2 through 7 is 2.67 ohms. And then that would tell you your equivalent resistance for the entire circuit is 
4.67 ohms. And that is the answer to that question. Now, if you wanted to, you could also just redraw what the final circuit is, and it would just be now just simplified to a single resistor, which we would just call REQ. <clears throat> I like to do this example problem because it really does illustrate like what it means to have resistors that are in series where they're along the same branch. And also when you have resistors that are in parallel, which again, the idea is compare a couple different loops. And the only thing that should be different between the two, the two loops is a single resistor. And that's how you know definitively that they're going to have the same voltage drop across them. All right, now let's go to an actual old AP exam question from uh, 2012. So what do we have here? <clears throat> it says uh, four light bulbs are connected in a circuit uh, with a 24 volt battery as shown above. Okay, I'm just going to relabel a couple of things here. The battery, I like to call it V naught, which is V O. Okay, we'll call this resistor R A. We'll call this resistor RB. We'll call this resistor RC. And we'll call this resistor RD. <clears throat> okay, now the first thing it wants me to do is it says determine the average potential energy change of an electron as it moves from point Z to X. Okay, so electron, uh, electrons have moved from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. So electrons are moving in a direction that would be uh, like this right here. And really what the question wants to know is uh, uh, as you cross from point Z here to point uh, X, what's the potential energy change? Now, the way we're going to do that is we're just, we'll use our equation that relates uh, your voltage to your potential energy. So we can go back and use the physics theory equation or AP physics equation, doesn't matter which one you use. And that equation is this, delta V would be equal to delta EP and then divided by the charge magnitude Q. So we wanna figure out, uh, let's write an AP notation though. So we'll say instead of delta EP, we'll write down delta UE all divided by Q. And then we want to get delta UE by itself. We want the potential energy change. So we'd have delta U E is equal to charge magnitude. So let's be charge of an electron multiplied by your delta V. Okay, now in terms of what this is, let's just label it. So this is the potential energy change in going from point Z to point X. Oops. Voltage point Z to point X. Now, this seems complicated because if you look at this and, you're, and you say, okay, I'm going from point Z to point X, I have all these light bulbs and these resistors in the way, but it's really not that complicated because you just need to think about how Kirchhoff's voltage law works. So Kirchhoff's voltage law tells you that uh, if you start okay, at the battery and you go all the way around in a big loop, okay, like this, okay, the net voltage has to be equal to zero. Okay. So let's step into an equation right here. So we can say, the sum of the voltage and going through that loop that I draw, uh, I just drew is equal to zero. Now, when you go across the battery, you gain energy. So we're going to write down the voltage as being positive. Now, uh, when you go from point Z to point X, like, yes, there are a bunch of light bulbs and resistors in there, but I, I don't really care about that. Okay. Like, uh, all I care about is the fact that I am just going from point Z to point X. So I can just say, now we're going to lose energy as a result of going through those light bulbs, which makes the voltage uh, voltage negative. But 
really, if you're just going from point Z to point X, we can just say minus the voltage and going from point Z to point X. So what this tells you is like a very obvious result. It just tells you that whatever energy is gained across the battery has to be lost. Whichever path you take to go across these light bulbs here, like there has to be an equivalent amount that's going to be lost when you go across these bulbs in going from point Z to point X. So uh, the voltage in going from point A to, uh, Z to point X would just be equal to the voltage of the battery. So again, the whole idea is you're gaining 24 volts when you go across the battery. And then when you go from point Z to point X, regardless of which path you take and which light bulbs you go through, you have to lose 24 volts in order to have the net voltage equal to zero uh, when you go through a loop. So making sure that Kirchhoff's voltage law is being upheld, which is just a consequence of conservation of energy. Okay, so we now know what uh, the voltage isn't going from point Z to point X. Now we can just plug it into the equation up here and calculate it. So this would just be delta UE in going from point Z to point X is equal to your charge magnitude. So that would be charge of an electron, 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And then the voltage in going from Z to X would just be equal to 24 volts. Okay, around this to two significant digits, and then we would get 3.8. Times 10 to the power of negative 18 joules. Now we'll deal with the sign in just a moment, whether it's positive or negative, because that's what part two asks. So part two says indicate whether the electron gains or loses potential energy when it goes from point Z to point X. Well, you're going across uh, bulbs, and when you have uh, the bulbs are resistors. So as the electrons go through the resistors, it's going to heat the resistors up and the light bulbs are gonna emit visible light. So there has to be a loss in energy as a result of doing that. So we'll say here that delta U E in going from point Z to point X would be equal to, uh, well, not equal to, let's clarify what the sign is. Okay, this is going to be less than zero since energy is lost in the form of thermal energy and light energy across the bulbs. So we can check off loses energy here. We can go back and we can actually add a negative sign into that. <clears throat> B, calculate the equivalent resistance of the circuit. Well, this will be a lot easier to do in comparison to uh, uh, what we were looking at, uh, what we were looking at before. So, <clears throat> Just in terms of uh, like how we can combine this. So let me erase the, this loop here because you don't need to make use of it anymore. Okay, now we have to identify, are there any resistors that are in series? Are there any resistors that are in parallel? Well, none of these resistors are in series right now because they're all part of different branches because, and we know that because there's different nodes between the different branches. So at, at this point, there's nothing I can do to combine, uh, uh, to combine them in a series. But uh, what I can do though, is a lot of these are in parallel. So, and the way I know that is, so for example, let's go to conventional current now, just because that that's typically the way we deal with uh, current flow as opposed to electron flow. So let's say that we go through a path here Okay, then we hit this branch. 
Okay, now there's two options. Like option one is you can go through this left branch and then come back down to this. Or option two is you can go to this right branch and come back down right here. Now, either way, you're coming back to the exact same point. So whatever voltage, uh, whatever voltage drop there's going to be across the light bulb A must be equivalent to the voltage drop across light bulb B. And it's going to be the same thing when you go down here. If you take one path that goes through light bulb C uh, compared to another path that goes through light bulb D, whether you go through the path through C or the path through D, you have to come back to the same path, which means that whatever the voltage drop is across C, that's going to be equivalent to the voltage drop that's across D. So what I know right here is both A and B are in parallel and C and D are in parallel. So we're going to start off by combining those and then we'll worry about actually seeing what the, the circuit looks like afterwards. So going back here and I'll kind of just start to show the work on this side. So we'll say, uh, so that was part A. Okay, this is part B. Okay, so we're going to combine and we'll do two combinations at the same time just to save some work. So we'll say we'll combine RA slash RB in parallel and at the same time we'll also combine uh, R C R D in parallel. So what does it look like? Parallel, we've got to use a reciprocal relationship. So we'd have one over the combined resistance RAB would be equal to one over RA plus one over RB. So that would be equal to one over six ohms plus one over three ohms. I'm not going to show the work for the common denominator here. You can just plug it in your calculator or just do it in your head. Just add them together and just find the reciprocal of what it's equal to. And we would have RAB would be equivalent to 2 ohms. Okay, then we do the same thing for RCD. So it will be 1 over RCD is equal to, you don't need to write down the equation one over RC plus one over RD. Once you recognize they're in parallel, you can just write down one over the variable and just plug the numbers in. So I can write down one over RC, uh, which is 12 ohms, plus one over RD, which is 24 ohms. Okay, add those together uh, and then just find the re reciprocal. And then I would have RCD would be equal to eight ohms. Now, if you go back and you redraw the circuit, so this here we have uh, my battery, V naught. Okay, again, the long end it just means it's the positive terminal. So now it would just look like this. So we'd be dropping down and we would have RAB drop down and then RCD. And you do that, now we just have a single branch, okay? So a single branch just means the current must be the same, therefore those resistors are in series. So then I would combine RAB. I guess we could put a step here. You say like that's step one. We can call this step two. Okay, combine RAB and RCD in series so this would then be <clears throat> your r equivalent would be equal to and again i'm not going to write the variables down let's plug the numbers in rab is two ohms and then you're going to add rcd which is eight ohms and then that would give you an equivalent resistance for this circuit that would be 10 ohms So like I said, that, that's quite a bit easier to uh, simplify compared to the previous example in terms of the, uh, in terms of the res resistors. <clears throat> now, the previous example didn't ask us to calculate the current or the voltage anywhere. So now this is where this, this, this problem is going to get tougher. 
So for part C, it says <clears throat> calculate the magnitude of the current through point Y. Okay, so point Y is in this branch. So what I really want to know is, uh, I'll just call this, uh, uh, let's just label it up here. We'll say this is uh, I, B. Okay. Now, again, going back and labeling this, we'll say that the battery has a voltage of V naught. I'm also going to call the current that comes out of the battery I naught. And then we need to figure out what ex uh, whatever the current is through this, this, this uh, light bulb, the one that is the three ohm light bulb, that's going to be the current uh, B, which is the current through point Y, which is on uh, that particular branch. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to do is I want to figure out what exactly is this current that's coming out of the battery. Now I can do that just by going back to uh, just by drawing a, a picture of what the equivalent resistance for the entire circuit looks like. That's going to be useful. Okay, knowing like what the total voltage, uh, the total current is, because it's, it's going to start to split when it hits these different paths here. So uh, we're going to let's. So this is part C. We're going to determine I naught. Now, if you actually took the, took the previous part, this is why I told us to do part B in advance here, because like we need to make use of part B to do part C. So if you were to redraw that circuit, what it would look like is you would have, uh, okay, you got the battery, V naught. Okay, it would come up here. And then when you combine all those resistors, it would just be R, E, Q. So if you took all the resistors and combine into a single resistor, then uh, I naught would actually just be the current that would go through the equivalent resistance of the circuit. If I have a circuit that's as simple as this here, where you have V naught, I naught, and R, Q, we can just use the equation V is equal to I times R to relate those different quantities. So here it would just be uh, manipulating for I naught. You would have I naught would be equal to V naught divided by REQ. This is usually the reason why you want to combine all the different resistors because it'll be a way in which you can figure out what the current through the branch that's attached to the battery is. Aside from the fact that it's just cool to combine the resistors, but this is the more practical thing in terms of our analysis is we want to figure out what exactly I naught is. Okay, so this would be equal to the battery voltage, which is 24 volts, and then divide this by REQ, and REQ is 10 ohms. So I know that I naught is going to be equal to 2.4 amps. <clears throat> okay, so now uh, we can just draw this, uh, we know that there's 2.4 amps that's going to come and it's going to hit this node right here and it's going to split into a couple different paths. Now, qualitatively speaking, you can just think about this. Uh, if you have current that hits a branch, the current is going to go through the path of the least resistance. So more of the charge is going to pass through the path that has light bulb B and less of the current is going to go through A. Now, what we can do is we can use a little ratio rule to identify how much is going to go through this right side branch. Okay. And here is uh, how we would do it. So we would say here that <clears throat> IB is equal to, you're going to take the total current coming in. So total current coming into that branch is the 2.4 amps. Now, in terms of identifying uh, the ratio of the current that goes through, uh, what you want to do is you want to take uh, the resistor that you're you're looking at. Uh, actually, no, that that's not totally right. So, uh, what you want to do is you want to take the equivalent resistance of these two. Okay, so that would be RAB. And you want to divide by the resistor that you're looking at. So the resistor you're looking at is going to be RB. 
I believe on the lab, I had you complete an exercise where you had to like try to establish some of these different ratio rules. And this would have been one of the ratio rules to identify. So again, when you're just looking at, uh, so again, you have uh, I naught coming into this branch right here and it splits. So again, you'd have like I A going in that direction and you'd have I B going in this direction. Okay, and this is RB. And then your combined resistance would be RAB. So again, your ratio rule would be IB would be equal to I naught times RAB divided by RB. And if we plug those numbers in, let's see what we get here. So this would be equal to I naught, which is 2.4 amps multiplied by RAB. Now that, that, that's just the equivalent resistance for these two ones that are in parallel up here. So that would be the value that was, uh, what do we calculate again? That was two ohms. Okay, two ohms. And then divide this by RB and RB is three ohms. So what this is telling you is it's telling you that two thirds of the current is going through that branch. Okay, so then I would have IB, and we can say that's equal to uh, IY, because IY is just up there. And then that would just be equal to uh, 1.6 amps. <clears throat> okay, and then C, uh, part two says, so this was uh, part one. Okay, part two says indicate on the diagram what the direction of the current is through point I. Well, we already identified. So again, current here, that's conventional current. So conventional current is what direction, quote unquote, protons would go in the circuit. So they would come out of the positive terminal of the battery, okay, go up, go towards the right, then drop down. Then they have this node or this junction where they split. So uh, some of the charge is going to go towards the left. Some of it's going to go towards the right, which means that uh, current goes through uh, towards the right through point Y. And I kind of already drew it on the diagram right there, but I could draw it again, I guess. So we'll say I Y is towards the right. Okay, D. So let's calculate the energy that is dissipated in the 12 ohm bulb in five seconds. Okay, now we're starting to deal with a rate now. Okay, anytime you see like time, you should be thinking of rate of energy change. Rate of energy change is going to be associated with power. So specifically, we would have power is equal to, it's the rate at which your potential energy changes. So we'd say delta UE divided by delta T. And we want to figure out what delta UE is. So delta UE would be equal to power times the time. Now, I don't know because it wants the energy dissipated in the 12 ohm bulb. So that's this one here. That's bulb C. Now, if I knew what the power rating of the bulb was or the power dissipated in the bulb, I could calculate it, but I don't know what it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute in another equation that's going to allow me to do this. Now, I do know what the resistance is, so uh, but that's not going to be enough to do a direct calculation for power now. I either need to know what the current is or the voltage, and I'm going to choose to write this equation in terms of current. So power is equal to I squared R. So if we plug that in, we would ha then have this is equal to, I'm going to say I c squared because we're talking about the current that's going through this bulb okay so that's ic okay multiply by rc the resistance of light bulb c and then multiply by delta t so the issue we have right here is we don't know what ic is okay but once again we can set up a ratio rule just to quickly calculate what that value would look like 
So if I want to figure out what IC is, so let's consider this again. Okay, so up here, I naught splits into IA and IB, but at this junction, it comes back together again, and then it comes back together, and you'd then be back to having I naught. Okay, Kirchhoff's point rule will tell you that uh, the the current uh, this current I naught that splits has to come back to being the exact same current because you come back to the exact same branch here. Okay, this current's going to split into IC going towards the left, and it's going to be ID that goes towards the right. So if I want to determine uh, what is IC, so IC would be equal to, you take the total current coming into the branch where it's split, so that's I naught, and then we're going to multiply by, now you set up this ratio rule. So now we're looking at the effect of the equivalent resistance between bulb C and D. So we're going to say RCD divided by, and the bulb I'm looking at is bulb C. So I have IC is equal to I naught times RCD all divided by RC. So again, that's one of my uh, uh, ratio rules that I can use to quickly figure out what exactly is the current through that particular branch. But let's plug the numbers in. So this would be IC is equal to I naught, which would be uh, 2.4 amps. Okay, and then multiply by RCD. So that's the equivalent resistance of C and D in parallel put together. So that value was eight amps, or sorry, eight ohms, divided by RC is 12 ohms. You can see that's a fraction again, that's two thirds. This is actually gonna give you the exact same current that you got uh, through branch B. So I'd have IC would then be equal to, so two thirds of that would again be 1.6 amps. <clears throat> and then to figure out what the, uh, the potential or the amount of energy that's dissipated, well, let's just plug it into the equation we have up here. So I'll bring it over towards the left and we'd have delta UE would be equal to, so IC is 1.6 amps all squared, multiplied by RC, which is 12 ohms, and then multiplied by the change in or the time, which is five seconds. So if we take, we'll say delta U, how about delta UEC? Okay, so if we have uh, 1.6 amps all squared times 12 ohms times five seconds, and we can write this as 154 joules. Let's keep it as three significant digits here, although I think we technically should be rounding it to a different number. I think it actually should be one because of the time value, but so I suppose we could write it like that too. We could just say two times 10 to the power of two joules and that's the potential energy change, energy dissipated in the 12 ohm bulb. Okay, one final part. <clears throat> it says rank the bulbs in terms of brightness, with one being the brightness. If any of them have the same brightness, give them the exact same ranking. So in terms of what exactly brightness is associated with, brightness is associated with the amount of power that is being dissipated. Now, we already know what the power is, uh, well, we didn't directly calculate it, but uh, the idea is to figure out what power is through these different bulbs. We just want to use the equation P is equal to I squared times R. Now, we pretty much know what the, uh, like in order to figure out what the power is through the bulbs, we just have to know what the current is through them. So we can go ahead and actually just very quickly calculate it. So I know from the previous slide that uh, IB we calculated that as being equal to, it was two thirds of the current I naught coming in. So that was 1.6 amps. Well, think about this here. Uh, if I naught was equal to 2.4 amps, okay, Kirchhoff's point rule at this junction would tell you that the current that's coming in has to be the current that's coming out. So to calculate IA, it's pretty simple. IA would just be equal to the total current coming in and then minus IB, which would be equal to 
2.4 amps, or yeah, 2.4 amps, subtract 1.6 amps, and then that would be equal to 0 0.8 amps, which makes sense because I already identified that two thirds of the current goes through ball B, which means one third of the current is going through that one. And then, okay, the current comes back together to give you I naught here, and then you have IC and you have ID. Okay, we identified that IC was also 1.6 amps. And you can just use this, this similar uh, argument right here. So uh, applying Kirchhoff's point rule, the branch that uh, enters the spark, uh, uh, yeah, this branch where I naught uh, yeah, diverges into C and D, we could just say that ID would be equal to I naught minus IC, which would be same thing. It'd be 2.4 amps minus 1.6 amps. And then that's equal to 0 0.8 amps. So again, one third of the current is going through uh, D. And again, that makes sense qualitatively speaking, because uh, uh, less of the current's going to go through the branch that has more resistance. Okay, the current likes to go through the branch that has uh, less resistance to it. Okay, so to calculate power, we're just going to use this equation and just uh, do it for all the different bulbs. So PA would be equal to, <clears throat> okay, the current through bulb A is, we identified it up there, it's 0 0.8 amps, all squared, multiplied by the resistance of bulb A, which is 6 ohms. So that's going to be equal to 3.84 watts. Okay, the power through B would be equal to its current. So the current through B is 1.6 amps. We're going to square that, multiply by the resistance, which is 3 ohms, and that's going to be 7.68 amps, or sorry, 7.68 watts, that is. The power through bulb C would be equal to, we got 1.6 amps through that bulb, multiplied by its resistance, which is 12 ohms, and then, yeah, 1.6 amps all squared times 12 ohms would be 30.72 watts. And then the power through or power dissipated in D would be equal to 0 0.8 amps all squared multiplied by 24 ohms and then this would be equal to 15.36 watts okay so we do have our, our ranking uh the greatest amount of power dissipated is going to be in bulb a so that would be one here or sorry, bulb c i should say okay second highest power is bulb d okay third highest one is going to be bulb B, and the one with the least amount of power that dissipated in it would be bulb A. So just notice right here, just like the different variables that are affecting power. So if you compare, for example, uh, B to C, they both have the same current through it, but the thing that's different is the actual resistance, and that's what makes the power dissipated a little bit different. So yeah, our ranking here is four, three, one, two. Okay, that's it for this lesson. And what you can do is in assignment number four, you can complete all the problems in the section called combining the resistors. And I'll talk to you in the next lesson.